I seen guys come into Poetic Companions that said they wrote a little poetry, right? They said they never did the spoken word aspect of it. And it's the difference between reading poetry and reciting poetry as opposed to spoken word. You know, spoken word is when you done memorized your piece, internalized it, done brought it to life, and, and, and did things of that nature. You reading it, okay, that's fine. But when you when you internalize it and do the spoken word, that's the whole theatrics. That's the drama of it. That's the life of it. That gives all the meaning to it. Somebody cut on the lights. I knew what it was from the begin. So I had to plot, plan, and strategize to win. Some of my actions was for the ladies, but the majority was for the ends. My competition was other street soldiers. I even competed with so-called friends. But I know, it is what it is. I regrets nothing, and I'm gonna keep it pure to my death. If you think you can take something from me, you're gonna have to take my last breath. It's death before dishonor, and I don't know nothing else. But gangsters get lonely too, so many a nights, I prayed to God for some help. It is what it is. Look me up, pimp. Check my file. A click of untamed gorillas with me. Been doing it for a while. So keep quoting your favorite rapper, spitboxing and talking loud. And we gonna see how many wires the dentist can fit off in your mouth. It is what it is. I was born a gangster, raised a thug, and baptized in the street code. You can't find one single soul to say I ever told. OGs told me that talking is a no-no. You do the crime, you do the time, you come home ready to roll. The joint, that's the downside of getting it in case you didn't know. If that man ain't you, then what you speaking on him for? Prosecutors and judges, we done went toe to toe. Put them up, put them up. You win some, you lose some. That's just how this game go. But it is what it is. So if you catch a dude snitching, go ahead and dig a hole. Who's to say it's not gonna be you next? to end up down the road. But it is what it is. You must don't know the nature of a rat. It'll uh, eat his own young in order to stay fat. He infested with diseases and he born like that. He even chew off his own leg in order to get out of a trap. I done watched my whole hood put them on my back to watch other suckers just fall and kneel and crack. A dude from my hood took the stand on me and that's a fact. Somebody must ain't never tell him, young blood, you ain't supposed to do that. So here I sit, knocking down calendars of a mid-range bit. I won't forgive and I won't forget cause some stuff don't deserve it. And I know when I step, this dude gonna be nervous. But if y'all need to man up, if you give, get out the streets and throw your hands up. Quit running to the law with that sucker stuff. I guess in my case, fear made the rat spill his guts, but it is what it is, man. Poetic, peace, I'm out. Oh, my name is Cardell Belfour, AKA Mighty Rock. I'm a spoken word artist, motivational speaker, life coach, and I also sell apparel. What really caught my interest in poetry was, I had been through the rap scene. And uh, when I went back inside on this particular occasion, which I am a second chance citizen, for those that may not know. And uh, I've been home for a year and a few days now. I've been a year to 23rd of this month. But uh, what really infatuated me with poetry was I had a chance to express myself and get a lot of feelings and emotions that I was going through by being inside. You know, it was therapy to me. So when I started writing, it was first it was just for me. And then when I started telling my story to my friends, they could relate. So when I was going through a situation, say with my girl, I sit down and write, and it'd be therapy for my relationship, and maybe I could even get with her better just through my writings. So as I kept writing, I kept getting better at it, and people was really enjoying hearing my writings, so I start building my mind state that this is what I wanna do. Poetic Companions is a writing spoken word word poetry group within the prison that the prisoners came up with. 
me and the, and the, like seven other founders of Poetic Companions, we came up with that because they was letting us have programs, inmate ran programs. So we got us a, a facilitator, a staff facilitator, and we came up with this program. And uh, we we made our own laws, we made our own rules, and we went around to the mental health department doing shows for those guys. We uh, did shows for the population. And uh, it's like down in Grafton, like they real big on letting you be what you can be as long as you're not trying to be no BS. You know what I'm saying? Like they'll let you, you can, you can, you can thrive if that's what you want to do. I was introduced to the Poetic Companions when Chris and I went to Grafton and we got to uh, jump into what they already had going on. They had started that themselves. They had a really, really cool spoken word group going on and they were doing, uh, doing performances for the general population that they organized themselves. And so our role coming in there was really just to bring in more resources from the outside, uh, try to bring in guests up at Lake Erie. We brought a number of writing professors from uh, CSU and also just poets who did regular performances. We got to bring them in. And so us just serving as you know a bridge to the outside world, we're able to bring things in there that they couldn't get on their own and really just you know assisting in that way. I think it's really important for uh, for people in prison to be able to have that kind of control over their own things, start up some kind of group and be able to really just uh, get together with like, seek out like-minded people, get together with them, create something. And I think it, the most important thing is being able to share it with the outside world, which is, you know, where we can help a lot. We can go in there, we can, uh, you know, help facilitate the writing groups and anything that they want to be brought out for us to put on the website or to even share at a public reading, we can do that. We can take it right out of there and, and get it, uh, you know, kind of through the prison walls. My experience was more, it wasn't more physical. It was more mental and spiritual. Because I was, I was holding my own in there. I mean, I'm a man, I'm gonna stand on my own, but it's like the mentality you have to have to deal with that day to day the same routine day to day, people looking down on you for your past mistakes every day. You know what I mean? You are reminded of that because you're not human no more, you're a number. And then they also will tell you that you are property of the state. So you can't even destroy state property, which is yourself. So like in, 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 in them situations, it's like you're gonna have to dig deep within yourself just to come up out of there with your, with your mind intact. Because I've seen a lot of people lose their mind in prison because they can't cope. And it's hard to cope with because you're not free. You're not normal, you're not a citizen. You are a ward of the state. And by you being a ward of the state, it's like they own you. Your name don't matter, what's your number? So, and going through that, I learned to tap into my spiritual, strengthen my mind, and I know if I got my mind and my spirit intact, my body gonna be all right. It helped get me through the pain. I wrote myself about the pain. I think one of the most important things we can do if we're being successful in you know, what we're trying to accomplish is to make people on the outside think about who's on the inside because for the most part when people think about prisoners they just think statistics they think oh that person just you know did whatever lost cause bad person whatever they'll have all these ideas and even just by sharing one poem that can make somebody think uh, well this is a individual this is a unique person with unique experiences and unique ideas and they're able to create this great thing and so I think that's the most important thing that we can do even just, you know, one by one, person by person, just showing people these are real people. Every one of the, you know, 2.4 million incarcerated people in the U.S., it's an individual. It amazes me what poetry can do to people. Like, the confidence, the, the, the language, it's like they come up out their cocoon and they finally can be a butterfly now. That's the way I've seen it go. It's been, it's been very helpful to me, man. It's done gave me a purpose and I'm gonna keep on pursuing my purpose. That words are power, 
I was I had always wrote that down in my my books when I was in prison. Words are power. Words are power. And then when I came home and I was sitting around thinking about what's my next step because I had started doing shows, so but I didn't have no company or nothing. And and I'm like I'm like I've never been in that situation. So I'm like, well, let me try to get me a company. You know what it costs, what I got to do. So I came up with words are power LLCs. And this spoken word, motivational speech, life coach, and I also sell apparel. So when I did that, it gave me more of a purpose. Because now I got a company that's recognized by the state of Ohio that says I'm open for business now. You know what I'm saying? So that gave me a sense of pride that within a year's time I was home, I done started a business. I done did over five shows. Like, I've been steady moving forward. Right now I have a piece that's in the Columbus Art Gallery on the wall up in there, so I just been, I'm just doing the work. I'm just doing the work as it come. I'm doing the work. I done wrote pieces for uh, an insurance company, you know, uh, Kemper Life Insurance. I just did a girl's 50th birthday. I wrote her a piece for her birthday. Uh, one of my partner's mom's passed, and uh, I did a piece for her funeral, so I just been finding my purpose, man. Like, if people asking me, all right, I'll try it out, you know. I remember sitting in, in prison talking about I know how to write personal poetry and this, 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 and guys believed in me, and I wrote pieces for them in there, sold them for the little soups or whatever we could get, you know what I'm saying, on the black market, you know. But uh, now I'm out here, and uh, I'm really trying to be the change I want to see in the world. I want to be a beacon of light to somebody, you know. I did enough wrong in my life to want to rectify it now. So that's what that's what my purpose is at, man. That's what my passion at. It's not easy out here. I ain't making a whole bunch of money. But I'll tell you what, I'm not going back to the penitentiary neither. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not trying to outshine this person, look better than that person, look down on this person. I'm just trying to look up on myself. You know, I'm going to quit treat myself bad, I'm gonna give myself a break. Because truth be told, I done did 28 years behind the fence, man, you know. And it's not no badge of honor, but I'm not ashamed either because I know the man I am today. And I know if I hadn't went through that, I wouldn't be the man I am today. So, hey, I'm out here and uh, I'm living my best life, if you ask me. You know, I'm living my best life and I'm trying to do good, man. You know, I appreciate opportunities like this. Like, people just keep calling my phone. They keep calling me. They keep reaching out to me on Facebook. I'm like, man, all this stuff for me? I just come home. Who am I? But I understand what my purpose is. So I'm going to keep pursuing my purpose. You know? <laughs>